Emily, what's on your radar? Well, let's talk about Michelle Goldberg. Last week, the New York Times columnist published a post Me Too reevaluation of sex positivity. This week, she slammed the ACLU for modifying a Ruth Bader Ginsburg quote to neutralize references to women. But casual sex and gender neutrality are pillars of the contemporary feminist pitch. Goldberg, one of the most prominent feminist writers in media, is effectively rebuking both of them. She isn't alone either. In July, BuzzFeed published a deep dive headlined, These Gen Z Women Think Sex Positivity Is Overrated, reporting that, quote, uneasiness with sex positivity is bubbling to the surface, especially in some Gen Z quarters. Quote, we, are really embra we all really embraced third wave feminism and sex positivity, and it impacted us so negatively, a 23-year-old rape survivor told the outlet. Being told that you should be having sex with people you don't have any relationship with really put in our minds that sex doesn't matter. I feel like we all just kind of got effed over. Now, in a column that referenced the BuzzFeed story, Goldberg observed, quote, sex positivity now seems to be fading from fashion among younger people, failing to speak to their longings and frustrations. Goldberg said, I started noticing the turn away from sex positivity a few years ago when I wrote about a revival of interest in Andrea Dorkin's work. Since then, there have been growing signs of young women rebelling against a culture that prizes erotic license over empathy and responsibility. Here's the best part. Somehow, she concludes, as sex positivity went mainstream and infused with a culture shaped by pornography, attention to emotion <laughs> got lost. Somehow? Well, maybe the proliferation and, and intensification of pornography had something to do with all of the sex positivity. On the changes to Ginsburg's quote, which argued for abortion rights, Goldberg wrote, quote, changing Ginsburg's words treats what was once a core feminist insight that women are oppressed on the basis of their reproductive capacity as an embarrassing anachronism. She spoke specifically about women for a reason, Goldberg said. That is exactly right. Earlier in the column, Goldberg also criticized the, quote, Orwellian effect of altering language. That's two blows against the dogma of cultural leftism in one dogmatic cultural leftist column, and two columns in a row. So again, as with her argument on sex positivity, Goldberg was hardly the only person to criticize the ACLU from the left over the, quote, change. She even got the organization's executive director to admit his regret. So while it's interesting that Goldberg, one of the staunchest feminists in corporate media, issued gentle but pretty fundamental rebukes to the feminist movement back to back, her individual qualms really are indicative of a sea change. Goldberg avoids blaming her fellow ideological travelers and maybe herself for creating an ACLU responsive to radicalized young staffers whose worldview erases distinctions earlier feminists fought for or for leaving a generation of young women emotionally scarred from the casual sex they were told would feel empowering. No, she blames porn without pausing to blame sex positivity for its pro proliferation and intensification and the proliferation of norms that clearly are hurting Gen Z women, as has been reported. But porn, as Goldberg suggested in her reference to Dworkin, is itself becoming another issue in the feminist realignment. Me Too's generational tensions were absolutely illuminating. The fresh lens that Ryan Murphy is right now applying to Monica Lewinsky, largely after others have done the same post-2016, puts 2021's feminism at odds with 1990s feminism, and rightfully so. In some ways, the Me Too expl explosion revealed that men and women are still adjusting to the important feminist victories of the second half of the 20th century, victories that put them in close quarters in white collar jobs, scrambling family arrangements, and childcare. Women should not have to sacrifice those freedoms. They were hard earned, and by some, and by some women with whom I disagree on a whole lot of issues. But if we pause for a moment and squint, we're in the early stages of what really does seem to be a feminist realignment. Of course, this isn't to say progressive women are all crypto conservatives. They are not, they will not be, most of the country is not. But the less cultural dominance, fueled by technology and mass media, changed the world very quickly. It's like a half century in the scope of human history. It's too bad that at least one generation of young women have been caught up in that adjustment, subjected to a hookup culture fueled by porn that left, them, that left too many of them hurt, alone past their wishes, child is past their wishes, and much less empowered than they were told. The good news, as we discussed here yesterday, is that a progressive like Goldberg took issue with the ACLU's, quote, Orwellian language manipulation. 
If we can at least return to a relaxed climate for speech, we can really start debating these painful and difficult and extremely consequential reactions to dramatic shifts in our cultural norms so we can agree on policies that actually benefit women, from Title IX to family leave, instead of erasing the distinctions that actually promote equality. Right, this is not to say that every woman should or wants to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. Of course that's not true. I don't think that's what women want. I don't think that's what most women uh, desire for themselves or should be subjected to at all. But the distinctions that feminists fought for, Title IX is really a fantastic example of this, in earlier waves, those are important for women. Those are very important for women. And to see Michelle Goldberg sort of finally, there was a long time where it felt like a lot of uh, true feminists had a hard time speaking out about these things. Didn't even want to sort of touch the issue of the ACLU or touch the issue of sex positivity because they're really thorny conversations and you get swamped the second that you sort of rebuke the dogma. I think these two back-to-back -back columns were actually a really positive sign that at least the climate is changing to sort of rethink some of these questions publicly. Do you, do you think that the pendulum is swinging or do you think this is kind of a synthesis moment in the sense where uh, you know, after being on one side here, you know, the thesis swing over here to the an an antithesis, and then you, you kind of blend those two things to, f to make actual progress and find something new? Or do you think this is just backlash and pendulum swinging back and forth? Yeah, I think the first way you described it is better, because to some extent it's not mutually exclusive. Like, to, to, to some extent, it's what is old is being blended with what is new, so it's, it is moving back to an extent, but I also don't see it as like reversing any progress, because I think when one ideology wins in the, the sort of culture and becomes dominant, the excesses, and you can point back to eras in cons when conservatism was culturally dominant, where the same thing happened, the excesses are really quickly normalized and mainstreamed um, of that ideology. And with feminism, the sort of academic, fringy excess, excesses of it are this like weird gender neutrality that doesn't actually help women um, because it erases sex distinctions. And Title IX, again, is a really good example of this. And so to that extent, I see this really as more of just a, like a moderating of the, the equality movement as it relates to women. And M Michelle Goldberg's in, in an interesting place to do it because she's, she's Gen X, so she's in between kind of the Gen Zs and the boomers. That's a good point. Who are it's, it's such you know, odd, odds with each other at this point. But on the other hand, Gen Z and Gen X, uh, you know, we're, there's a huge gulf between us and them. Uh, how, do you, how do you think that this is going to be received by Gen Z? Well, I think Gen Z is already, and uh, Michelle writes about this in her piece, and how there's TikToks that are, you know, the Gen Z is creating TikToks that are sort of questioning feminist orthodoxy as it relates to sex positivity in a very Gen Z way, which is super funny, but it's also, it makes a lot of sense um, because it's a, it's a very painful time, I think, for young women. Um, I, I don't think it's, it's pleasant for a lot of young women. It's a very, like, our sexual politics are very confused right now, but if we can at least go back and, and start talking talking about some of the basics of what um, is, is desired by women, what is healthy for women, um, as opposed to what's healthy for men, uh, because a lot of, I think, the excesses of feminism were great for men. Hookup culture, great for men, um, not as well loved by women, as it turns out, when you sort of do that experiment. And so I think Gen Z is, is going to sort of be happy to, to start is, hearing is that. Is part of this Gen Z being more interested in gender than sexuality? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I, th I think that's absolutely true. And that's, I mean, again, though, a lot of these conversations are like Gen Z, a lot of people might dismiss as just sort of, you know, they're, it's all euphoria, whatever happens on the HBO show. And it's, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, just in the same way it happened with millennials and girls, <laughs> but, which I love, by the way. Uh, but um, with Gen Z, they also are sort of swimming in the podcast universe. And a lot of them talked in the BuzzFeed piece about Tumblr. And so they're exposed to all of these like the Tumblr still Tumblr. around. Well, I think back when they were like even younger. Oh, okay. um, and so they're swimming in all of these different ideas, um, some of which are radical, some of which are reactionary. And it, I think they're sort of they're going to be a very heterodox generation. That's kind of hard to define, other than the fact 
fact that they're kind of heterodox, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Defined well, by their lack of definition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ryan, I'm looking forward to your radar next. I'm sure it's going to be on feminism as well. No doubt. <laughs>